Ooh, let's hope this works. Let's have a look. All right, so in this tutorial, um, we're going to look at how to paint with the lasso tool and with um, the selection tool and the gradient tool. Let's just go to the week four resources and uh, we're going to paint a rock on a hill. And that's the sketch of the rock. And we're going to add some rust texture. So now I just want to show you a preview of what it's going to look like, um, which I think if I'll click here and then I open it up, you'll be able to see what it might look like. So opening in two seconds, one second, and it should be opening right now. Stand by. There it is. So that is the finish rock on the hill uh, landscape. And we're going to go through the motions of creating that step by step. All right, so let's just close that for now. First things first, let's, um, let's click on create new. And as always, an A5 canvas will be fine. Uh, landscape, thank you. And let's just change the background color while we're at it to an off white, click OK, and then click on create. So there's our brand new A5 canvas. Now, before we do anything else, we need to go and copy that texture from the Moodle page, week four resources. So all you do is you right click the sketch, you click on copy image, and then you go to the canvas in Photoshop and paste. And there it is. And you might remember the multiply layer effect. If you choose multiply from here, it will get rid of all the white areas. It just hides it. So now it's transparent. Now we'll come back to the rust texture in a little while, but first let's look at how we can paint this rock and the hill using um, just the lasso tool or one of these other selection tools. We've got the polygonal lasso tool. We've got uh, the lasso tool. Uh, so we're going to play around with that. So first things first, let's create a new layer and place that underneath the sketch. Now this is the sketch layer, so let me just rename that sketch. And this is the new layer, so we'll call this rock. Good name for it. All right, now normally you would go to the paintbrush tool and paint away and that'll be fine. You choose the color that you want. So let's say you want that sort of color for your rock. And, uh, and then away you go, you paint. Uh, but we're not gonna do that, Control Z. We're going to try something completely different. Let me just zoom in so we can really see the shape of the rock. We're going to click on, you know, you can use the polygonal tool that will give you straight lines, or you can use the lasso. Let me just show you what the lasso does first. You need a steady hand. Let's just put in a feather of, uh, yeah, three will be fine. That would just give us a subtle soft edge. And with a steady hand, you basically just trace around the shape of the rock. And um, you can see my hand's not too bad, not too bad for an old guy. And then where you can't see the rock, you just guess. And then back up, back up here. Oh, it's not quite right, but doesn't matter. This is just a rough sketch. All right, so then when you finish, you have a selected area. And you can see the layer is selected, the area above the sketch is selected you got your color so all you need to do is fill that with um, the alt backspace key alt backspace is the shortcut for fill you can also choose fill from under edit there it is there all right so you can see that works pretty good and you know i've missed a bit but it doesn't matter now here's the interesting part if i deselect that Control d lock the layer using the lock transparency pixel icon, this one here, I can now do another selection with a slightly darker version of my color. So I can go down to say this color here. And then again, watch this. I'm going to select this shaded bit here. Now I can start right out here. This won't be affected, but if I now go carefully uh, up and around, over to here, no problem. Then back out again. I can continue along my journey and just select the shaded area only. 
So I can go up and down, up and down, and then all the way around. This bit here won't be colored because I've got the lock transparency pixel on. So now if I go Alt and Backspace, the darker color has now filled that selected area. If I hide the sketch, you can see what it looks like. It's pretty good, pretty good so far. So let's do that again. This time I'll deselect. Let me change to the polygonal lasso tool. Now this one will give you straight edges. And again, a feather of three. So again, I'm staying on the same color layer, and this time we'll go click, click, click. And the difference with the lasso and the polygonal is with the lasso, you press and drag and draw the shape. With the polygonal, it's a series of clicks. And as you can see on the screen, they appear a straight line. So this is another effective way of doing it. And then you can come all the way out here, back to the start, and there's the selected area. So once again, Alt Backspace, and you now have a darker shaded area of the rock. And this is how you do it. So let's just do one more, just for luck. Um, back to the layer, stay on the same tool. Let's do this bit here. Okay, so back up to here, and then back to the start, and then Alt and Backspace. Now, if you want to add some highlights to the rock, that's easy enough too. You can actually uh, go and choose a highlight, uh, a lighter color in the same range, and um, I'm just going to guess that there's a highlight at the top here. So again, I can use the polygonal tool and just um, Go around the edge of the rock just like that. Maybe do a couple of interesting shapes. Then back out here, back to the start. And now because I've got the lighter um, tone, if I go Alt Backspace, you can see quite easily that I've got a, it's not light enough actually. I should have gone lighter. Let me just undo that. Let's just go back. Let's go for a lighter color still. All right, so let's go Alt Backspace. That's better. All right, so you can see I've got a little bit of a highlight there, and I can just continue in my merry way adding highlights to the rock. So that's actually not a bad way of doing it. Um, these areas around this part of the rock, I can again, um, I can choose a darker tone. I can go down to here, and then um, I'll just do one more with the polygonal. Let's just say, for instance, I want... Um, this area here, back up to here, all the way across, maybe down to here. Yeah, let's just go over here. Just be wild. All right, so I want this area here to be that color, Alt and Backspace, and there you have it. So this is painting with the lasso tool and with the polygonal lasso tool, and it's not bad. It's, a, it's not a, it's not a bad technique. Now. I'm going to introduce the gradient tool to add a little bit of um, interest. And the way that works is uh, you start off. Um, let's just let's just choose another color. Let's go and with the eyedropper, let me sample. Actually, let's just go back in here. Let's just go a little bit wild. Let's go into the oranges. We'll go into the oranges. Let's just choose that color for now. Now, the way this works with the gradient tool is you make your selection. So maybe I'll just go back to the lasso tool. And let's just say I'm going to select an area over the rock that looks something like that. It's a bit bizarre. Now, while it's selected, I'm going to click on the gradient tool, which is that one there. And then up here, make sure under basic, you have got this icon selected. That's going to choose a gradient from orange to nothing. If you choose the first one, it's going to go from foreground color to background color. It'll actually mix the two colors that you have there. We don't want that. We want only one color gradient into nothing. So again, you press and drag and draw a line and you end up with that effect. So if I deselect, you'll be able to see it a lot better. Not bad. Interesting effect. 
Let's just try that again with the lasso tool. Let's choose a different spot. Let's say we're going to go a little bit wonky here, a little bit wonky that way, and then back to the start, back to the gradient tool. Got the same setting as before. Drag in the same direction, and you've got this sort of effect. So that could be an interesting uh, painting exercise for someone. Uh, play around with it, have a bit of fun. Let me just zoom out again and bring back the sketch layer. All right, now you, what you can see is um, a hill that goes up um, from left to right. So now we're going to create a new layer. We're, oh, hang on, sorry, wrong one. We're going to click on this icon, new layer, and we'll call this layer hill. And we'll place the hill below the rock. So it's in the background. And with the uh, lasso tool, yeah, why not? Lasso tool. I'm just going to go, um, let's choose a color first. Uh, what color grass or hill will I want? Uh, let's go for something a bit muddy. Yeah, that'd be good. A bit more yellow. That's it. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to start from here and I'm going to go up the hill with my lasso up to the end all the way around and all the way back to the start. So I'll just zoom out so you can see what I've done. Let me just do that again in case that was too fast. Uh, you're going to start over here on the left hand side. You're going to drag, press and drag behind the rock, up the hill, and then all the way around here, all the way around the bottom, and then back to the start. And then Photoshop will make a selection. Um, and then, of course, you go Alt and, oh, sorry. Oh, I've stuffed up. There we go. Have the selection and then you go Alt Backspace to fill that area with the color that you've chosen. I just noticed I should have actually had zero feather for that because I don't want a fuzzy line at the edge. That's OK. Um, that's fine for now. And then once you've got your heel and it's filled in with the color, you lock it with that same tool as before, the lock transparency pixels. And then again with your lasso, you can uh, create the adulations of the hill, any shapes you want, um, and then you can fill those with uh, a darker color or as you saw earlier, in fact, let's go for a darker green. If I click on the gradient tool, I can do that sort of effect. So let's just do a couple of those. Let's go back to the lasso. Uh, let me start from this side here. Uh, and I'll just do some, you know, ridges, interesting shape. And then back to the start. And then while it's selected, back to the gradient tool, drag your mouse upwards, and then you've got that lovely gradient going up the hill. And you can just continue this uh, till the cows come home. Um, what this needs now is a sky. So for the sky, I can use the background layer, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to create a new layer. Call it sky. And then I'll choose. Um, I don't mind this blue. Yeah, that's a pretty good blue. Let's start with that one and let's go for a darker version of that for the second color. So instead of the green, I'm going to sample that blue there and go a bit darker. Yeah, maybe about there. So I've got a light blue to a dark blue. And this is important with a gradient. Always have those two colors. And this time when you go up here to the basic um, gradient choices, you click on the first one because you want to actually blend those two colors together. So not this second one, the first one. And now all you do is take your gradient tool and draw a straight line in the direction that you want the gradient to go. Now that's the wrong direction. I want to go uh, light to dark. So from the, this area here, it's going to be light and this area is going to be dark. I could at this point decide I want to go lighter so I can just change the foreground color and then another drag of my mouse. And I like that. That's not bad. Yeah, I'll keep that one. OK, so now we've got the grass, we've got the or the hill rather, we've got the rock and we've got the, um, the sky. Let me just hide the sketch for now. Let's introduce some grass. You can see the grass there now in Photoshop. There is a lovely tool that will create the grass for you. 
So uh, let's create a new layer. And we'll call this layer grass. And we're going to put the grass layer above the hill. So we've got in order of appearance, uh, the background is the sky, then the hill, then the grass, then the rock. All right, so for this new uh, brush, um, grass brush, we need to go to the brush tool. We go up here, and if I'm not mistaken, um, I'll just, I can't remember where it lives, but if I type in the word grass, it's called, there it is, June grass. So it's under legacy brushes. June brush. Now, if you haven't got the legacy brushes um, in your version of Photoshop, you can actually open it by going up to, uh, let me just show you, you go up to here and you choose it from there, from the pop-up menu. So go up to the little cog, choose legacy brushes and it belongs to the legacy brushes. But again, um, if you can't remember where it lives, you can type in the word grass and if you've got legacy brushes, it's this one here, June grass. Now, before we start painting, we need to choose the right color for our grass. So I'm going to choose um, two colors. I'm going to choose a light green for the foreground color and a darker green, maybe bordering onto the orange. Actually, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe something like that. Now, the way the June grass brush works you can play around with the opacity as well is um, let me just zoom in to show you if you click once you get a couple of blades okay see that now what you're getting is a mixture of those two colors one blade is that color the other blade is that color now if you press and drag you get a few and I've just realized that, that grass layer should be in front of the rock. Now you can see it. So you can see it mimics the, um, it mimics some grass. Now, clicking once gives you a couple of blades of grass. Pressing and dragging gives you a whole bunch. Now, I suggest if you're going to do this, change the size of the brush um, intermittently. So you have some big blades and you have some small blades. Uh, there's a couple of big ones there, a couple of big ones there. And let's go for a couple of tiny ones um, over this side here. Bring the brush size smaller. So how's that? It's pretty good, isn't it? It mixes the um, the two colors together. You can go back and change the colors at any stage. You know, if you want a more yellow or mustard colored grass, let's go into this area here. You can change it here. Let's go for a darker green. Why not? And now it's going to mix those two colors together. See how that works? So it's pretty good. I reckon a combination of pressing and dragging and single clicks, as well as alternating the size, you'll get um, quite a good effect. So when you zoom back, that's what you end up with. All right, I probably stuffed up this area here, but um, not to worry. I'll just make um, the Blades come forward. Oh, too much, too much, too big. All right, so that's pretty good. I've got some blades of grass now and uh, maybe a couple more at the top here. Why not? And that's basically it. That's the um, the painting with the selection tools and the gradient tool complete. You can decide to have the sketch included or not. You can just have it almost like a vector graphic. Now we come to the interesting bit adding texture from a photo. If we go back to our um, Moodle page and scroll down, I have uploaded this rust uh, photo, this photo of rust texture. So all you do now is you right click it and as before you copy it. Now, the way this works, if you go back to Photoshop, you wanna apply that rust texture to either as a portion of the rock or the heel or the whole rock or the whole heel. So if you want to just apply that rust texture to just a portion of the rock, this is what I suggest you do. You unlock the layer, you take the magic wand tool and select one of those areas that are flat. So when you click on a flat area of color, 
Photoshop or selected. Now, what's interesting is the higher the tolerance is here, the more area Photoshop will select. So at the moment it's on three, it's only picking up one area of color. If I bump that up to 35 and click here, it picks up, um, does it pick up any more? No, it still doesn't pick up, it's not enough. Let's go to 65. 65 is more tolerance. Ah, now, see how it's picked up more area? If you go to 120, it's going to pick up the whole rock. So the tolerance decides how much spread you have with the magic wand. Let's just go back to five for now, and I'm just going to click on this color here. So once you have magic wand the area that you want the rust texture to apply to, you can then go to edit, paste special, and paste into. And all of a sudden, you have rust texture inside your rock. And here is where the fun part comes. You can change the opacity of your layer for the rust, I mean. You can fade it out. You can change the layer effect. So different layer effects gives you a different um, look. You know, that one's called overlay. That's not bad. Multiply gives you that. Color burn gives you that. And of course, normal is normal. You can also fade out some of the texture using the brush tool, believe it or not. And the way that works, if you click on this mask here, this is the mask that was created automatically when you went to paste into. If I can just zoom in, I'll show you what it looks like close up. Let's just zoom in. I'll just minimize that so it's out of the way. All right, let's go back to here. There we go. Can you see that? Now, the little white areas are the is the area that I selected before I did the paste into. So if I now zoom back out, if I paint black in those white areas, then I will start to hide some of the rust that you can see. And the best way of understanding this is for me to, um, to prove my point in practice. So I've got the mask selected in the layer palette. I've got my brush selected. I'm going to choose a soft round brush. Let's go here all the way up to the top where the general brushes live. And I'll choose the soft round brush. Now we'll bring the opacity down to about, I don't know, 36%. Now remember, if I start painting black where the white areas are, it actually starts to fade some of the rust. It actually hides the rust. If I go and paint white, it reveals it. And of course, wherever I paint white, it reveals the rust. And the reason it's going outside of the area now is because I forgot to select um, the, I forgot to click on the lock transparency pixel layer. So let's just go and undo that move. Uh, Control Z. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's go back to there. Let me click on a lock transparency pixel. And now I should be able to. Oh, no, it still does it. That's right, because I've got it. What you're forgetting, Con, is if you're supposed to uh, select, hold down the control key and click on the mask to select the shape. That's what I forgot to do. Sorry about that, guys. I might just bring the opacity down a little bit. Yeah, that's better. All right. So now. If I click on uh, here and paint black, I can fade out some of the rust. Don't know if you can see that. Let me just zoom in so you get a really close up look. Okay, make the brush a bit smaller. So if I start painting black in the mast area here, um, I can fade out some of the rust. And that way you can control how much of the rust is opaque and how much of it is transparent. So that's a pretty good effect. Now let me try something different. Let me delete that layer. I'll click on the little trash can icon. Let me delete that layer. And this time I'm going to hold down the control key and click on the thumbnail for the rock layer over here. So control click, 
I've now got the whole rock selected and let's try and paste into. Here we go, Sp uh, paste special, paste into, and now the rust has been applied to the entire rock. And all I've got to do now is change my um, layer effect. If I go to overlay, look at that, it's pretty amazing. So the overlay layer effect works quite well. Let's bring the opacity down as well. Oh, that's starting to rock. Excuse the pun, sorry. <laughs> Um, now we go back to full view. Let's just uh, zoom out a little bit. Let's do the same with the grass, shall we? Let's um, control click the thumbnail for the uh, the hill, sorry, the hill layer. And let's try and paste into that. Paste into. And again, change the layer effect to overlay. Wow, check that out. That looks pretty dynamic. I can bring down the uh, opacity if it's too bold. And that's pretty much it, guys. That's how you create um, a landscape painting using just a few tools um, in Photoshop. Hope you enjoyed that. Sorry for um, stopping and starting and, and stuttering a bit. Uh, I'm just getting a bit tired at the end of the day, but hope you enjoyed that. See you later.